Hey everybody, how you doing? Hope you're having a lovely day. My Ryobi five ton log splitter is not having a lovely day. In fact, it's got a problem. I purchased this about six years ago for $250, half price at the time, got it for a bargain, and it's been working brilliantly. However, you know, as we all age, my Ryobi log splitter also ages quite unnicely, but that doesn't really matter. The unit still works. It did work until a day ago. I was, uh, it's winter now here in Australia and I'm chopping up some logs and then something simply happened out of the blue. Now, just uh, before I go on to sort of troubleshoot this, my Ryobi, I have done a little bit of a home fix here where I have actually attached a pole that I can operate on the ground. I've made a special button at the top here and made it so it can uh, retract very easily simply by going like this. I might do a video on that and show you how I wired it all up on another video. Purpose of this video is that it's not working at the moment and you might be experiencing this as well. What's the problem? Well when you turn it on this is what's happening. My turning on switch is simply here and look at what happens. It's not turning on. What is the problem here? Well, we'll take off this guard over here first of all. Now I've already removed the screws and there's a fan here. The problem is that it's not turning. Now it will work if I actually push it in one direction and then activate it, then it will turn on. I don't know if I can do this with one hand. Let's see, hang on, there we go. Okay, that's interesting, isn't it? Let me turn it the other way. Okay, it goes both ways. Now, the thing is, this didn't work, so why not? Let's see what's happening. Oh, there we go. The way this works is, it stops, and when I pull it over this way, it continues moving. That's great, I'll turn it off and I'll switch this over this way and it retracts. It will go back all the way, but it probably will not turn on again. I'll turn on the switch. No, I literally have to do this. Turn it off and it retracts. Okay, so there's something with the starting ability of this motor. Let's open this up and I've got a feeling what it is. All right, we open it up to the insides. I believe that this is probably the problem. This is called a capacitor, and this helps with the starting of the motor. Now, I have a feeling that this is no longer operating. Sometimes on some videos you may have watched, you may see the capacitor and there's a big bulge. That is not the case with this one, but I have a feeling that somehow it is faulty nonetheless. Let's just turn it on one more time, see if the problem still exists. Let's give it a flick. Yep, yeah, and it goes back. All right, so what I have to do is have to try to track down a replacement capacitor and put it in and see if that fixes this problem. I reckon this is what it is. To remove the capacitor, we're gonna take this out. Just make sure it's all turned off, which I've already done. And this will come out. And you can see the capacitor is held in by two screws at the end there. We'll release that and disconnect it. There we go. We just gotta be careful because we wanna discharge any power that's stored up in there. I'm not too sure with this one, I'm no expert with these, but I wanna just make sure it's discharged. I'll show you how to do that. Capacitors store up electricity and power just needs to be discharged. If you touch both ends there, you can get a bit of a shock. So we're going to be getting a screwdriver and just discharging any potential power by touching them both. And there's nothing. If there's stored up energy in there, there would be a big uh, zap and a bit of a flash but there is nothing happening there. 30 microfarads, class B. The voltage is 500 and 50, 60 hertz. 
So I'm going to try to find a replacement. Hopefully we can find one for a cheap price and hopefully this is what will fix the problem over there. And the cheapest that I can find it is on eBay that it will come to me in a very quick time period. Uh, $17.94 and you'll see up on the screen here it actually does say that it has 500 volts there. It is the CBB60 and it's the 30 microfarads which is pretty much this. This is what I'm after. Buy now. All right, the day has come, peeps, and my replacement capacitor has now arrived. This is the old one right here, and this is the replacement one that I purchased. And we're going to install this now, and let's see if uh, this fixes our problem and gets this motor working reliably. Once again, remembering this one, there doesn't seem to be any sort of bubble or any sort of a fault with it from appearances, but it was not working correctly. Let's see if I've got any luck here. This was what was it, $18 or something like that. Let's get it installed. Okay, I have attached the capacitor and as you can see, I've just left it dangling here because we're just going to test this out first. Now. This is a switch here and we're just going to test it out just over here, just being very mindful of where my fingers are placed. Okay, feel free to put how unsafe I am in the comments, I appreciate that. Let's turn it on. Very good. I'll check that this switch works. Excellent. So it's turning on instantly. It's doing what the capacitor is meant to do and providing that um, push that the motor needs to start. So that's fantastic. That's, uh, that's problem fixed. All right, I'm just going to put everything else back now into position here. Just cover it up and put this on. All right, now with everything replaced, it's time to just uh, give it a final test. Let's use just a piece of wood here. And that seems to work just fine. All right, hope you learned something from the video, guys. Thank you very much for watching. Give it a thumbs up if it helped. And I'll catch you on the next one.